a while ago you said that 4,800 on the S&P was probably the high water mark not only for this year but for several years to come. You still think that is the case? That is my general operating uh, uh, manual. Uh, I think last time I was on, I talked about the Pharaoh who had a dream. The dream was in the Bible and interpreted by Joseph. And his dream was that we were going to have seven lean years following the seven fat years. And I'm not making a seven-year forecast, but I, I basically believe that we've had fairly irresponsible fiscal monetary policies. We've pulled demand forward. We've got to get our house back in order. We've had an explosion of debt in the system. That debt has to be serviced. We're probably facing an environment of continued high inflation, rising interest rates, and uh, unless we go to fiat currency, rising taxes. And the market really isn't cheap. I think I find a lot of things to do. It's a very strange market. Uh, you know, the, it, it, the indices themselves have no fascination for me, but I find a lot of individual stocks that are attractively priced. So, you know, we're engaged, we're finding things that make sense. But overall, well, I'm, I'm not expecting much in the market. Yeah, I mean, it's, a, it's a, a pretty dour outlook. There are a lot of things going in the opposite direction right now, but if you're finding things you like, maybe we should take that positive note and talk about a few of them. Well, uh, my criteria, to be honest with you, in stock selection is I'm looking for, given my conservative view of the environment, I remember from my CFA study days that a certain percentage of what a stock did was a function of what the market did. So, you know, I'm looking for two cycle-tested companies. They've been through a couple of recessions and didn't get blown apart. I want to be paid to wait, so I'm looking for dividend income while I'm holding a security. I, uh, companies that have the capacity and the willingness and the ability to buy back cheap stock. But if I own something which I think is cheap, I don't want them to tell me it's cheap. I want them to act uh, and buy back stock that's undervalued. Uh, I want quality, reliable management. I want a discount to market valuation. Uh, I'm generally avoiding bonds. Uh, you know, no one, no one, myself included, and certainly Powell, knows how high rates have to go to stem this inflation. Uh, hmm. So, uh, you know, it's things a long like laundry safe. list. <laughs> yeah, well, you uh, have a high them. wish <laughs> list. Well, I could find them. Cigna, well managed, buying back five, six percent of the company annually, so the twelve times earnings. Energy transfer run by Kelsey Warren. The man puts his own money on the table. You know, he's been a big accumulator of his own stock. He yield six and a half percent. The dividend is going to go up. Lithium Motors, they're out there with a twenty twenty five forecast of fifty to sixty dollars a share. Stock is trading around two forty. Uh they just beat in the last quarter. I see the chairman of the board just bought some stock in the open market, paid cash for it. So, you know, I, I'm finding things to do. Uh, I'm having a decent year relative to the averages. I mean, I'm working too hard to be flat, but I'm I'm flat, which I think from everything I'm reading is an accomplishment. We have 22% of our portfolio in energy. And I think the energy stocks as a group are very attractive at three times cash flow. And they're discounting $65 oil and 350 gas. And I don't think we get anywhere near those levels anytime soon. So tourmaline is a terrific, uh, you know, major gas producer up in Canada, generating, I think, about $20 a share in cash flow. Stocks, you know, 80-ish, worth well over 100 you know, so I'm finding things to do. Yeah, flat. I think there are plenty of managers and investors who would take that in a heartbeat. I mean, you're talking about the S&P off by 19 percent for the year, off of its high at least, and the Nasdaq down by about 28 percent from its high. So there are lots of people who would love to sign up for being flat right now. One of the things you just said, though, really caught my attention, this idea that you would stay away from bonds. You don't like treasuries. You don't like any of that. And there are a lot of people who are saying, look, these things are actually giving you a real yield, especially if you look at the two-year, um, how quickly you can get paid back, and at least you're not going to lose money. And this is with the full faith of the government behind it. Why, why would you stay away from all bonds at this point? Well, two-year bonds is like more, more, you know, a place to park your cash. I have better places to park my cash. But, you know, ever since the great... flat, the and the two years is at 4%. Uh... Yeah, I, I could see that, but I have a better place to park my cash. I have a lot of money with a guy that does workforce lending, and uh, he's been delivering me 1% a month, paid weekly uh, for nine years, and never missed a payment. So but I can understand that. You know, the point I would make is, ever since the great financial crisis, the market's been screwed up. Prior to, 19, two, prior to 2008, the 10-year government yielded in line with nominal GDP. So take your choice. You know, is trend GDP... 2% real, 2% inflation, that's 4%. Uh, 
nominal GDP is running 8, 9, 10 percent. You know, we've had financial suppression. And I think that's in the process of ending. So I don't know how high rates go, but I could find things in the stock market that make more sense than buying bonds.